Let me introduce myself. I'm James Hall. I am an engineer with NAS Solar Electric, and specifically, I am our engineering and sales manager. Um, NAS has been around for at least the last four decades, providing clients with equipment and specifying products. Uh, we work with everyone from your basic DIY customer to highly experienced contractors. And specifically, we will, our engineering team will design solutions and specify products for a particular application. Uh, we will obviously distribute equipment. We have an online retail store um, as, well, as well as a wholesale division. And to follow up with those specifications, we will provide technical support, commissioning support, um, and basically solidify the deployment for the equipment that you've sourced from us for all of our clients around the world. And we specialize in residential and commercial systems, uh, specifically with uh, ESS storage. So we do a lot of products, and sorry, we do a lot of projects and we offer a lot of products um, based around batteries. Let's see here. So this is our team our team of geniuses and support staff whose sole goal it is to make sure that you get the right equipment for your project and to make sure it gets there uh, in a timely manner. We basically are the liaison between your manufacturer and you as the customer. So we will make sure that for your project, you get the right equipment, you get uh, you know, the correct components to make your project work, uh, get it to you in a timely manner. We uh, stock ridiculous amounts of equipment uh, for this industry, solar panels, modules, power electronic equipment like solar converters, batteries like home grid, racking, everything you'll need for a project, uh, we will be able to offer it for the most part. We specifically, uh, well, we work on a huge variety of, of applications. So anything from residential uh, grid tie, ESS systems, we do focus a lot on off-grid um, or grid independence, uh, tiny homes. We do quite a lot in the oil and gas industry for standalone systems, cathodic protection, even RV, marine, yachts, huge range of, of applications that we can provide and specify equipment for, we have available options for, for those types of applications. Why would we choose home grid and SolArc? Well, SolArc, it, specifically for like residential um, applications, commercial applications, SolArc's great for, it's a great multi multimodal inverter. All right, it's modular solution. They offer inverters from five kilowatts to solutions that can cover up to 180 kilowatts or more possibly with their newer uh, 30K and 60K inverters. We're hoping for some stackability there. Uh, grid tied applications and off grid being that they're a multimodal inverter, they can be completely independent and they offer advanced communications, which is why home grid is also great as well. So they'll communicate uh, in a closed loop fashion with Solark inverters. And so they're also a modular solution, uh, nine kilowatts to 500 plus kilowatt hours of uh, battery storage, indoors, outdoors. They're all listed. So they have the safety certs that are needed, CEC listed and serviceable. So these are all very important characteristics that help us uh, when we want to specify a product solution. We need that versatility, we need the modularity, we need the ability to service a wide range of applications, these are the products you want to choose. And how do I know that? Well, I personally live with this equipment. I have YouTube videos that talk about this, or our, our, our YouTube channel talks about this um, in, in much more detail, but I run my entire house completely in a grid independent situation, um, basically using very little, if any grid. Uh, my goal is to use none. Um, grid goes down, have no clue. Happened a couple of weeks ago. And the only reason we knew is because everybody on Facebook and the community started posting, when's the grid going to be up? When's the grid going to be up? And we had no clue. We actually went outside and we were laughing about how dark the neighborhood was uh, when our house is lit up like the 4th of July. So 
anyways, I know we know our team uh, of geniuses. Basically, multiple of us have uh, battery-based ESS systems that, you know, with SolArc or various other components that we offer and systems that we offer. So we can support these projects and these, and we can offer the products that you need uh, to be able to get a system put together perfectly for your application. So I'm gonna hand it over to Therese who manages our wholesale um, partner program. Go ahead. All right, so thanks for that great introduction. And as James said, um, we are, um, our history is in uh, off-grid and residential systems, but we've had a wholesale program for the last uh, three or four years and we're rapidly expanding it. We would love to partner with um, installers, dealers, resellers out there. We have the uh, warehousing inventory and expertise to, um, to work with you. So if you haven't, um, checked it out yet, you can find the information on the program on our website, solar-electric.com. There's a partner program tab. Um, that is the application for the wholesale program. And um, any questions, you can always reach out to me directly at the email posted there. Um, and then of course, uh, we'll be sending out this recording. So if you don't have a chance to copy it down right now, you'll get it in the slides later. Um, Okay, that about does it for us. Thank you for attending. And we're handing it off to Shane now with HomeGrid. Cool. Hey, Therese and James, thank you so much. Uh, we love non solar electric and uh, excited to be with you guys today. So I'm Shane Hardesty with, uh, with HomeGrid. Um, HomeGrid is uh, part of Lithion Battery. And I'm going to share my screen real quick here. Just wanted to show my face, but I'm based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Been here about seven years. Uh, it is still snowing, so just so you all know. But I'm going to share my screen real quick. Quick intro to uh, lithium battery. Um, been around since the late 90s, and uh, they've been in lithium iron phosphate for a couple decades. So, I mean, certainly no group knows the chemistry better than us, I, I'd say. Uh, we have applications in uh, medical, military, construction. Uh, we have Zambonis up in Canada, so a, a wide variety of of, uh, of systems of batteries we've developed, you know, for for many different applications. And HomeGrid is our residential energy storage arm. Uh, we're soon getting into small commercial as well for anyone who's interested. But one of the big things uh, that I think a lot of people will appreciate is we do have significant financial backing through Lithion. Uh, it runs through a group called TriWest Capital Partners. And in the next three to four years, we've already committed funds. Our, our target goal is to produce our own prismatic cell lithium iron phosphate cells again uh, here stateside. So that'll be somewhere between Nevada, Arizona, or Texas. And uh, so we're very excited about that and, and bringing all the sourcing back to the US. Um, and so when you think about batteries, I, there's probably a, a lot of people here represented in different markets in the U.S. So there's there's a range of motives for batteries, right? Some of it's just emergency backup where you have a pretty stable grid and you just want to have a system there for critical loads like some uh, you know, refrigerators or freezers or different appliances for the duration of a power outage. Some people want to work towards uh, grid independence, right? And then in some markets, there's some rate arbitrages that you can work with your local utility. Um, so, so there's many motivations for batteries. And if you talk to, to James and Therese, you know, they can help you with your specific market, kind of uh, realize what some of the major benefits will be when using batteries. But particularly why home grid? There's, there's several brands out there today. So why home grid, right? Um, Going to talk a little bit about that and then go into how we, you know, the, the general outline for how we size a system. And then I'm going to turn everything over to SolArc. And one of the big reasons we've partnered up with SolArc will be pretty evident for those of you who check out our specs. Uh, you can get deep in the weeds, of course, by looking at, at our spec sheets. But uh, when you do look at those, you'll see that the output 
uh, of both the Solark and the home grid battery. I mean, they they line up perfectly. So neither really is is the bottleneck for each other. And I'll get a little bit into that. But um, with with home grid, one of our uh, big value propositions is we have a uh, capacity, a, an output for whole home backup. And so what I mean by that, I'm going to pull my spec sheet up here. If you go to our website, by the way, you go to product stack series specifications, that'll pull up this page. I'm not going to go through every line item here, but what I will focus on is capacity, power, and surge. So what we can fit in a single form factor is about one and a half to three times the specs within these three categories of, of most other batteries in the market today. Especially when you uh, when you have at least four modules and go up to eight in a single stack, we're talking right 14 kilowatts of continuous and a 24 kilowatt surge. So that really takes it from you know being able to power just lights and a couple uh, small appliances in the home to to really cranking on air conditioning, right? Big appliances. And and there's a little caveat there. You have to have the right inverter uh, paired up with the battery to be able to supply all that power to the home which short answer that that is solar. But in terms of all that capability that we have, our modular design is another huge benefit to working with us. So our website has a lot of, lot of good helpful info here, but I'm gonna scroll down to this little uh, image right here. It's illustrating that within a single form factor, again, we can go from two to eight modules. And these stack like Legos, there's no wiring in between each of them, just male and female connecting points. So think of starting with a system, maybe you know you just want to have a battery for emergency backup situations, but think one, five, 10 years down the road, as your demand increases or you want to have more capability, you're able to add more modules to this system and we're not gonna require you to, to use up any wall space like other brands, right? Um, or, or just any other, you know, this doesn't take a large footprint. I'm going to play this quick 30 second video that just shows our install concept for those who are visual. Each of those is about 110 pounds each. So really, you're just stacking them up. And then at the end of the day, you know, with, with all the capability of the modular design, we wanted to make something that, you know, would look good because um, these are going, you know, often in, in garages or storage spaces, places that are often visible. Um, so last thing I, I'd say is uh, for those in, the, in cold markets, you know, we have heated modules. And so we've, uh, we've passed to 2,500 installs. We're approaching 3,000. Uh, we've, we've installed in all sorts of climates from Puerto Rico to Florida, all the way up into Montana, Northeast and Maine. Uh, we even have some installs in Canada. So, so we've, we've thought carefully through all the, all the different variables that, that would uh, you know, affect a, a battery's health and longevity uh, and, and taking the proper you know, fortifications. So now as far as sizing a battery, <clears throat> so we do have a calculator you go to our resources and our sizing tool, uh, essentially you'll you'll need a uh, you know a power bill that can outline your your monthly kilowatt hour usage. Uh, for those of you who are off grid, I mean grid tight or off grid, I mean for sure consult with Nas Solar Electric. But for those of you who want to do some homework and get some sense of what what size battery do I need, right? You punch in your kilowatt hours per month. For example, if someone's using you know 2,000, oh yeah. 2,500 kilowatt hours in a month, right? It gives you three categories here where if you just want emergency backup, partial offset, or, or moving towards grid independence or an off-grid set, you know, these would be three suggested uh, you know, battery sizes. The nice thing is with our modularity, you can uh, tweak that you know, in small increments, which is really cool. Also want to shout out to Solark's website. They also have a calculator. You go to their main page, support, go down to the calculator. You can punch in your zip code. And then um, it gives you a little more detail on like actual appliances. You can uh, punch in actual numbers of appliances you have at your property. 
and then it'll give you really uh, really helpful estimates on a on an average daily kilowatt hour usage. So I do have a, 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 a customer that we worked with in the Rocky Mountain Power area. I have a power bill here. Just want to illustrate one thing, and I've I've redacted everything, and um, we got their permission for uh, for the record. But um, it's a little pixelated right now. Just uh, but if you can see this, what you're looking at is this customer's average daily kilowatt hour usage by month. And so when you're sizing a battery, you often want to look at the month of highest usage or the the couple months of highest usage. That way, when you know you're sizing your battery for those months, you'll be uh, well above you know the the demands for for the majority of the year. So, for example, January 2023, this customer's kilowatt hour usage uh, got up to about 70, um, you know, in, in that time frame. So the the quick math, and again, Nas Solar Electric will will help you with this, but across the, the US market, generally you take that number, cut it in half. If you have solar, for example, you figure on, on solar producing for uh, uh, the first half of the day, and then your battery setup, if you want to you know, complete the whole second half of the day, you, know, you cut that uh, kilowatt hour, that daily kilowatt hour number in half. Um, and of course, you know, based on your preference, if you're just going for a little backup, or again, covering that full second half, that determines how big of a battery size you know you actually want. So any any further questions on that? We will have a Q and A session so we can spend a little more time on that. Um, the last thing I'll say is is just what I what I said in the beginning. We have a, a battery that performs at one and a half to three times the uh, power and capacity of, of virtually all of our competitors. However, the you know it's very important to have a powerful inverter that that can match that because that ultimately controls all the power flow to the home and, and what actually makes it to your home. So with that, we're going to bring on Andy with Solark. Thanks, brother. Let's see if my video is working. Guess not. Okay. Well. Thank you very much for the uh, the introduction. I'm going to share my screen as well. It's really exciting to be here with everybody today. There's so much to unpack when we're talking about our equipment, its capabilities, different types of applications. I'm not going to go super deep today. What I'm going to do is just give you a quick overview of what a whole home backup looks like and why we're going bigger at Solark. And then I'm gonna leave a little bit of time actually, this is an unconventional uh, approach, but I'm gonna allow NAS Solar Electric uh, James to actually describe what I normally do because uh, they're solar geniuses and I'd like for them to be able to show off a little bit. Um, we're, we really value our partnership with them and it's really important to Solark as a manufacturer that we work with partners that know their stuff. Uh, it's 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 extremely important that the, the the brand and the products are represented properly, and that you as the customer uh, get properly taken care of by people that really are not only talking the talk, but they're walking the walk. With that said, we uh, do have quite a few tools, and so you you got a little sneak peek at our uh, sizing tool and battery calculator. If you send in your designs to us, uh, you of course send them to NAS, but if, if you need a, uh, an engineer directly from Solar to look at those, we, we offer this service, complimentary of course. We have live engineering support seven days a week. So in the event you're unable to get a hold of your installer or you're a DIYer and it's uh, a, a question about our products, you have two layers of support. You can call NAS, and I would encourage that to be your first step, but you can always call us. We have engineers readily available uh, to speak with you, or you can email us, and uh, they're, they're instructed to get back to you within 24 hours at the latest, uh, also to get through their emails and voicemails at the latest. So just let us know, and, and we're happy to answer your questions. And all of our systems are remotely accessible. So with your authorization, of course, we can get inside your system and 
do any kind of monitoring adjustments or tweak the settings depending on your utility environment or if you're off grid and you're adding maybe uh, something like a, like a generator we we can we can get inside the system with your authorization so it's kind of like having us right there uh, in the home with you besides having the equipment and a little bit about us i'm i'm very proud to say that uh, we're the choice of we we loosely call them integrators so they take our widget our, our solar converters and put them inside their larger widget so one public company that's growing really fast is called beam they do off-grid ev charging stations and we also work with savant power they do high-end home energy and other types of iot automation and one of the reasons that uh, these groups choose to go with us is because our warranty, it's a 10 year warranty on the uh, 12K and 15K. They're backed by what we call halt testing. I'm not gonna go into the details of this, but basically what it means is we try to beat the heck out of the inverters and they survive. And we have the data to back this up. So look up halt testing, compare that with what other manufacturers in the ESS and hybrid space do because it's an extremely rigorous testing process so we can ensure that when you're needing backup power or you're living completely energy independent, you can't afford a problem. And so we wanna make sure that the hardware is robust and the software is super stable. And we did quite a few projects, uh, some of them actually with NAS for the Navajo Nation. And the environment there is fairly harsh and so we're very proud that they uh, chose to go with us. And so when we're talking about whole home backup, I always like to talk about something very personal, which is myself. And I have a second home in Puerto Rico. This is my daughter in the green shirt on the left. That's my brother in the back in the kitchen with his wife and uh, some cousins. And we took our entire 3,000 square foot family home in Puerto Rico uh, off grid. Now it is grid connected, so I should be a little more specific there. We designed it to power the home in a grid down scenario because the grid in Puerto Rico is extremely unstable and the power is extremely expensive. But we did want to be able to sell back because in that area they do allow for what's called net metering, meaning you can be credited for the excess power that you can inject back into the power grid. And when we were going through our own personal decision-making process, we wanted something that was just easy. Solar, we, we continued to get requests for more power because, and for those of you who are not very technical, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spend much time on this. So hopefully your eyes don't glaze over, but this is our 12K. And when we designed our 12K, it was designed where if you wanted backup power, you needed what's down here at the bottom called a critical loads panel. You also hear backup loads panel. I prefer that term backup loads because critical can sometimes mean something that's literally life or death, where it's generally just a, a group of circuits that are necessary when, when the grid is down. But oftentimes we found that either homeowners, and I was one of these, you, you can't decide what you want to put on the backup panel or you decide you want to put one thing on the backup panel and then later you change your mind or you thought one thing was going to be on it and then nah that you know we need something else so for the contractors out there who are watching this that can be a little frustrating because it can oftentimes result in truck rolls or a miscommunication with uh the homeowner or the building owner and and you just want to make it easy and not have to pull a bunch of wire and and deal with that type of install so we we, meaning Solark, uh, the R&D team went to the drawing board and they said, we're going to design something that can be like this. Oops, that's a little bit big there. Let me back out here. We want something that's going to be like this, that can just back up your whole home instead of it being like this. It's just going to back up everything. Most homes are 200 amp service, and I'm going to talk shortly a bit about the 200 amp integrated transfer switch that allows you to eliminate the need for that separate backup loads panel. So we wanted something that would back up our whole home. We wanted something super easy to install. We didn't want to overcomplicate the, the install process. And we wanted something that 
would transfer super fast. We, we do have some medical needs in, in our household there, and we didn't want to risk frequent power outages disrupting those medical devices from glitching. We also have a lot of clients that work from home. It's a pretty popular way to work nowadays, and they don't want their computers glitching or their servers uh, having to reboot. And so this is a key feature that brings a lot of value to our customers because oftentimes they don't even know that they've lost power. It's so fast that it, it is what we call the no glitch switch. Another feature that we wanted to have is that we wanted to tie in a fuel-based generator. So again, we encourage everybody to live as green and, and clean as possible, but the reality is, especially in off-grid, sometimes you need a little help, but with a, a battery-based system and uh, a, a Solark, you can significantly reduce the need for fuel uh, for a backup generator. And it's also uh, something that uh, is very hard to do. And so I encourage anybody to investigate other options out there, but some of the mainstream options that are available more to more urban uh, and I would say urban areas, it's very difficult for them to work with generators. So if that's something of importance to you, please ask NAS Electric about how to integrate generators with the solar or, or you can contact us. And then finally, we wanted a lot of power. Uh, we have a, we have guests, we, we like to entertain, and we also have uh, air conditioning. It, it can get a little humid and hot in Puerto Rico. And so we wanted something that would also save a lot of space. So even though we have 3,000 square feet, we don't have a very big garage in where our main service panel is. So this is the system here where you have the home grid stack. That's five of the five kilowatt hour batteries. So that's a 15, uh, excuse me, a 25. A kilowatt hour nominal stack with one solar 15k and super clean install we didn't have to take up that huge footprint on the side of the wall to accomplish what we wanted to do so here it is 10 kilowatts of solar with one solar 15k uh, and a home grid battery and so what we're wanting to show you is no critical load panel no backup loads panel you just wire it right in to the 200 amp transfer switch that's right here. And so, James, can you can you share a little bit more about your experience uh, installing one of these and your customer's experience versus with uh, other options that require a, a, a backup loads panel? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, just my particular installation, uh, I used a 12K because when I did my project, it was before the 15K. So if, uh, if you watch my video on, you know, the advantages of the 12K, um, I talk about that, uh, you know, dedicated loads panel and, you know, the fact that I had to move circuits over. Um, it turns out in my particular case, I probably would have had to do that anyways, because a lot of the West has meter combo panels. And so you have to move circuits around anyways. But, um, but regardless, the fact that the 15K has 200 amp AC pasture capabilities is a huge game changer. It was a massive change when that inverter came out. What was it like a year and a half ago or so? Maybe a year ago. It was, anyway, it was, it was, it was May of last year. Correct. Yeah, it was it was amazing because previous to that, you had to I don't know the right way to say this, but you really had to like nail down what loads you thought were important and what loads you really didn't care about. Most people don't know and they don't want to choose. And in my case, at my house, I didn't choose. I knew I could run my entire house off of the 63 amp pass through that the, the 12 K had, but imagine going from 63 amps to 200 amps with a continuous, you know, output of 160 amps of throughput through, through the inverter. It's, it was a major change to the industry and, you know, to our design concepts. And so, yeah, it is, it is, it is awesome to be able to do that. We can through lug off of a load center and, or pull all the breakers from a combo panel and move them over to a 200 amp sub panel and put a 200 amp pass through. And then you don't have to think about anything. Um, if you're, 
like on the east coast a lot of times they'll have a meter disconnect and then you have a load center in a completely different section of the house is that how it is in puerto rico it's like that in florida where you have like a load center in a completely different center section of the house and you have the, the be. in some cases not 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 all cases but we do see that sometimes yes yeah so that makes it really easy because you can pop the inverter outside it's outdoor rated uh, feed the you know grid service after the meter straight through the inverter out to your AC load center. You don't have to think about it. And then you know if there are particular loads that you don't want to operate in a grid down scenario, uh, then there's plenty of devices that allow you to do what's called load shedding, um, which I think you might have been talking about next. We do have a load management solution that uh, we're finishing up. It's probably not going to be out until well, what I'm hearing is Q4, but if, if it doesn't happen, please uh, don't uh, send me nasty emails. <laughs> okay, uh, There are other options too. We have- uh, there, are, there are out yeah, there. Um, similar uh, concept basically allows you to dump off loads like maybe an EV charger or hot water heater or air conditioner in the event of a grid failure. Um, maybe if you have a small battery bank. Yeah, this is, this is a concept picture. Uh, I think of what you're talking about. So on the left here, we have what a main service panel uh, generally looks like. And at the bottom, that's a concept of what our load management system, uh, it, of course, that's that, that's a pretty raw board there, but that's the idea is that it would be able to use AI to, uh, in quotes, know when to shed loads to significantly reduce the, the amount of battery that you could possibly need, or conversely, you could power a whole lot more stuff with the same amount of battery. Exactly. And the point is not that you have, is the point is you just don't have to be concerned with that kind of solution with all the loads in the house, just dumping your batteries in five minutes, right? Like, right. you know, like my EV charger is going, you know, I'm pumping 11 kilowatts into my car, grid goes down, my 20 kilowatt hour battery is going to be at zero, you know, in a couple hours in that scenario. But, you know, with load management, you can shut it off. The Solark also has some features uh, which are really cool on the gen side. Uh, instead of like, for example, in my, in my application, I don't use, I don't have a generator. So I'm not, th that circuit wouldn't necessarily be used for a generator. So I use it essentially as a dump load circuit. So it goes and powers a supplemental air conditioner, some baseboard heaters, an EV charger, like these kinds of loads. It's got 50 amp output. And so it can power quite a lot. Um, and these kinds of loads uh, that would usually um, you know, be non-critical basically could go on this. If the grid fails, it can shut those loads off. So you can really, even with just the, the solar arc itself, you have a lot of flexibility. Mine's 50 amp, but I think on the um, 15 kits, 150 amps of, of output. So you can, really decide how you want to use your system without really needing a whole lot of additional equipment. Um, if you just understand the various uh, features that the products have to offer. Absolutely. And I'm going to uh, just elaborate a little bit uh, before uh, I, you know, we, we, we get to the Q and a, if you already have solar, this is also a good fit for you possibly because you can AC couple what you have into our uh, either gen uh, input, that's another feature that you can use it for, or you can actually do it out of the load output with some, uh, with a bit of creativity, which we have in our uh, manuals. We have several single line diagrams, or you can just ask uh, the geniuses at NAS how to do it. And then you would just take, uh, if you wanted to add more solar, you could add up to another 19.5 kilowatts of DC solar. So. Being able to DC couple and AC couple is a nice feature because you can put a lot of solar power on just one inverter. And it also gives you flexibility if you've already got solar. A lot of people went solar, maybe five even, I've seen as far back as 20 years ago. And now they, they want to add what they have to a new system and they don't have to rip out the previous investment. They can just add on very flexibly. And then another feature is over here on the left, this is where you hook up your batteries. So you would hook up the home grid on, on the left side here, and you're going to get 
a much more efficient charge and discharge because this is on the DC side. And since the power from the solar panels are DC and the battery is DC, you don't have any conversion losses or you have, I, was, I should correct myself, very minimal, very minimal conversion losses. And so we have closed loop communications established with the hundred. We have a battery integration guide on our website, or you can just ask NAS for it and they can and pop it over to you and, and talk you through the settings. The goal with establishing communications, number one is make it easy. You don't have to guess, you don't have to program things manually and take a lot of time. And number two, it makes the battery and the inverter pr perform at their best. It, it's extremely important that you have proper balancing and I'm not gonna go into the details about that. That's, that's something Shane can do more. But the idea is that the inverter and batteries talking to one another really maximizes and optimizes the investment that you're going to be making. So with that said, uh, I, I have an, just one little example of a really big system. This is now we can do three phase with our systems. And this is 12 of the 15 Ks and 100% off grid scenario. This is down in Belize. That's a chicken uh, processing facility. So if you're Thinking big, you're you're in the right place. But if you also want to do something small, uh, we're we're still happy to work with you with one of our smaller sized inverters. And just to give everybody a, a little idea about uh, our roadmap, uh, this is uh, an old slide from uh, Puerto Rico, but it, it is in English down here. Uh, we have a goal. Uh, we we do a lot of research. First of all, we we research our competition. We we try to understand what they're coming out with. We want to have an offering, not only just for residential on the low cost side or for partial backup or for the whole home. We have released our 30K uh, native three phase inverter for CNI. Our 60K uh, will most likely have its ULs in June. That's what I'm hearing, end of May. We have plans for microinverters at the end of this year. We have plans for optimizers uh, around the middle of the year. Uh, I'm hearing uh, June for that as well. Uh, we're, we're finishing up some testing. EV charging next year. So we are working very, very hard and very fast to release uh, a full line product suite that, uh, that you can work with NAS to, to implement for your home or your business. So with that said, uh, thank you very much to, to everybody for attending. Let's go to the Q and A. Great, thanks, Andy. Yeah, so oh, there we go. So uh, we, we, oh, go yeah, we about. do have one Q and A question so far. Hopefully, we can get some more. Go ahead. Yeah, take it away, James. Uh, yeah, Laura asked, uh, you know, what MID 200 amp disconnect is recommended to pair with the Solark? Uh, first things first, uh, what's an MID? So an MID is a microgrid interconnecting device. By nature, the Solark already has this built into it. It has the grid connection, it has your load output connection, and it has the contactors built into it. So there are plenty of products on the market that are maybe like an AC lithium battery solution, like a Tesla Powerwall or something, where they might have a separate device that is the disconnect between uh, the grid and the home. And that would be effectively what the MID is. Uh, the solar has it built into it. That's, I think that's one of the reasons why it has a high reaction time. It doesn't have a huge amount of communication uh, latency and stuff between that. Um, it controls the disconnect internally on its own contactors. I think today's uh, Q&A might be a short Q&A. <laughs> Could, could, could I, since, since it seems like there's, there, there's a, a smaller crowd today, wh where is everybody from today? If maybe put it in the chat, just, I, I, I'm curious where we're, where the audience is from, and maybe we can speak about some things that are specific to your area. So I see uh, Abe, Enrico, Jonathan. Azanari, Laura. Certs. 
are there certs? So my natural, so are there certs required for installing and commissioning? Um, so I think you mean listing uh, certifications in, in uh, all of the equipment like Solarks and uh, the home grade batteries all have their appropriate listings for the various applications you would use them for. Absolutely, in North America, this is a big requirement. There's plenty of products on the market that don't have these uh, who try to pass themselves as quality equipment and uh, they, they don't have the the safe, they don't have third party safety testing that goes behind the product to guarantee it's going to be a good product, it's going to be a good solution, it's going to be safe. So, yes, there are certs required before you even think about installing and commissioning a product. Um, on top of that, uh, a lot of jurisdictions, you actually have to get uh, you know, a permit. So, if you're going to get a permit, the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction, is going to require that uh, your equipment is listed. Uh, there is you know, as it says in the National Electric Code, the equipment needs to be listed for use. And so all solar equipment has to be listed for use, has to have, a, you know, appropriate listings and ESS systems, uh, energy storage systems have to have their appropriate listings. Um, and there's a lot of cost that goes into that. And so um, it's really important that you make sure, you know, the equipment that you get and have is going to have these listings. I see that Abe here is uh, from San Diego. Thanks for for the response. So I'll I'll touch on something uh, really quickly about California, and I think uh, in your area, Abe, that's SoCal Edison uh, territory. Right now, California has just implemented what's called NEM 3.0. NEM means net metering, and 3.0 just refers to the fact that now the, the rules have changed. So previously they allowed you to sell your excess back into the grid and, and compensate you handsomely for, for that excess. And, and now that's uh, changed and the, the cost of power is going up and the amount that they give you back is uh, de minimis. I think they give you maybe just a couple of pennies back. What does that mean? That means that investing in batteries with your system is going to pay dividends. And in order to benefit from a battery-based system, you need a hybrid system. You can't go with a conventional grid-tied system like you used to be able to do in the past. So in your area, this is going to be extremely important moving forward. Another uh, consideration, and I'll allow Shane to touch on this a little bit more, is the UL9540 certification. So uh, Mr. Bailey asked about certifications. Now you're in Flagstaff, but many jurisdictions around the country adopt the California regulations as kind of a standard. It's kind of a copycat scenario. Hey, if California is doing it, we'll do it too. UL 9540 has a second edition. So they came out with a first edition and then they came out with a second edition last year and if you do not have meaning you meaning the battery company does not have ul 9540 second edition it is not compliant in the uh ahj that's the authority having jurisdiction or basically your municipality and so home grid is one of the uh i think few companies out there period uh that that has this and they're uh, fully compliant and we're uh, extremely excited and proud that they've uh, kept up with all the <laughs> the regulatory hurdles that have um, been thrown in front of us. And also the, all solar converters are on the uh, CEC list and they are uh, uh, compliant with the home grid batteries. Our 30K is CEC listed. It's, uh, you know, uh, almost, I think it's uh, just maybe just a few weeks away and the 60K coming soon. So generally there's a little bit of a lag once we get our UL to get uh, on the CEC list, but all of our residential grade inverters, the 15K, the 12K and the 8K are, are good to go. So Shane, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, it just quick comment on battery chemistries. Uh, very briefly, there's, you know, you have the lithium umbrella and 
a lot of those, you know, certifications like the 9540A, for those of you who have heard about that, um, you, you just mainly need to know that there's, there's nickel, manganese, cobalt based, and then there's lithium iron phosphate. Those are the two main chemistries under the lithium umbrella. And it's a night and day difference as far as lithium iron phosphate, the chemistry that we use. Um, there's several brands moving to that chemistry now um, and for good reason. So the big critiques against NMC, nickel, manganese, cobalt base uh, is, is the longevity of the battery cells. If you graph you know, a, a battery's health over time, you know, uh, nickel, manganese, cobalt base uh, degrades quicker than lithium iron phosphate. And then there's also the, the issues of, of fire propagation and combustion. Uh, any lithium based bat like any lithium based fire that you you've probably heard of in the news, like it's it's all been in regards to nickel manganese cobalt based, where that hasn't been an issue at all with lithium iron phosphate. We got another question in the chat, looks like. Yeah. What is the battery voltage for the 12K solar? Is it available in higher voltages? I'm, I'm going to let James ask it. I know the answer, but I'm going to let James answer the, the, the question. Uh, 12K, 15K, 5Ks, they're all nominal 48 volt. Um, there's not a high voltage version for any of the residential uh, Solark inverters. The only high, high voltage inverters that Solark has is the 30K and 60K. Um, in the high voltage area, there's some challenges, and Shane can probably allude a little bit to this, but when it comes to ESS listings, uh, most of the high voltage stuff is, it gets complicated. There's a lot more hurdles to jump through when you go over 60 volts. Um, and so um, most of the common residential solutions are going to be at that lower voltage 48 volt. And there, you know, to some degree, there's not a huge advantage to going with the high voltage topology, um, maybe a little bit of efficiency, but yeah, the 12K is 48 volt nominal. Also, Laura has some follow-up. So she said, follow-up on the MID, why do I need a fused disconnect and change drawing or diagram? I, I'm, I'd have to see the disconnect, fused disconnect. But here's the thing is, if you're talking about batteries, being that Shane's battery to inverter, uh, all of the Solarx uh, residential inverter, well, 12K, 15K, they have a, a breaker. So for common residential installations between the battery and the inverter, there's a disconnect there and overcurrent protection, uh, which is convenient. And on the load output side of the uh, inverter for 15K, there's a 200 amp disconnect. And on the Solar 12K, there's disconnect, or there's, sorry, 200 amp breaker. You can see it there uh, at the top right-hand side of the, so there's the battery breaker on the on the top left, and then the uh, load 200 amp load disconnect and overcurrent protection on the top right. Uh, the PV inputs have their own disconnects. The actuation is on the left of the inverter. And then with respect to your grid input, that's going to often have a disconnect, and uh, you know most likely a, a breaker coming in. So any breaker inside the inverter would just be supplementary. And the same from the generator, if you were feeding a generator into this, a generator would also have a breaker on it. So any of those disconnects or breakers there would be supplementary. But on the 12K, there's breakers everywhere because this is a space thing. She also asked one more question. Um, looking to install in places that have snow. So yes, uh, yes, Laura, the, the heated modules are available and, and you can get that through a uh, non-solar electric. Yeah, we've had success with those. And um, I mean, the other aspect is uh, there's no, not, not, not a reason to always per se, well, I guess, I mean, San Diego's not gonna give you too much snow, uh, but I mean, temperature is not as big of a concern as uh, everyone makes it out to be. Uh, it seems to be the forefront of concern, but it's often one of the last things we ever hear about. Um, and so 
uh, there's plenty of considerations that you can make when it comes to installing, like, uh, you know, the equipment's all listed and safe. Why not install it inside? Install it in a garage, install it in a convenient place. May maybe this isn't possible uh, with the particular project. You know, maybe there's advantages with um, doing it uh, outdoors. Like on my case, I installed the inverter outside, but the battery is inside on the other side of the wall. And so there's some options. Um, there's lots of options when it comes to the installation and the project. So we can help advise on best practice for those types of questions. Yes, so uh, Enrico, the question you just had was uh, for DC coupled solar, can you work with optimizers? Um, absolutely. So we've used Tygo optimizers uh, for a very long time with Solark uh, without any issues, but Solark is about to release uh, an optimizer that integrates with the Solark and allows you to do monitoring of the modules in PowerView. Um, and so the, the optimizers are going to integrate with the monitoring platform, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, that'll be awesome. I mean, obviously the optimization aspect is, uh, is nice, but what a lot of clients want is to be able to monitor the productivity of each individual module and to confirm whether or not all the modules are working, um, quality assurance or whatever. Um, and so the optimizers, you know, will serve uh, that feature as, as to being able to uh, manipulate power in the event of uh, shading and whatnot, but then also tracking. And another reason why we oftentimes see optimization is when you have a cut up roof and you have what I call funky azimuth which is uh, my, my term for basically you have your, your, your solar panels facing different, different angles, but then going into one charge controller or, or MPPT. And so optimization rather than just conventional rapid shutdown uh, is sometimes recommended in that type of situation to make sure that you balance out everything going through the MPPT. Yeah, or we'll fall back on AC coupling. Uh, if it's got a small bias. So if, uh, you know, if a majority of your solar array is on like the West route, bear in mind, like a 15 K has three trackers. So you can put a significant array, six kilowatts plus on your South, West and East roof. Uh, and let's just say you have like a little dormer or something like, you know, you got, you can put four panels up there, throw them on, um, you know, an inverter in AC couple them into the, into that. So. There's a lot of flexibility with the Solarks. It's amazing. I just AC coupled eight panels on my system a couple weekends ago. Just one day, just threw three kilowatts up there on micro inverters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Uh, Enrico, you follow up to your, your question here, rapid shutdown with the Tygo optimizers. Uh, yeah, we have all of the Tygo equipment and with the cloud, uh, the CCA kit, uh, you, can, you can do rapid shutdown, um, module level monitoring uh, and you know, control of the, the optimizers um, you know, independent of, uh, of the Solark. So, um, but yeah, that, I mean, one of the purposes of having optimization or module level power electronic equipment, uh, like the fire safety modules from Tygo, um, is the rapid shutdown aspect. So we have a lot of options for rapid shutdown, but you can achieve rapid shutdown with the optimizers as well. Oh, one thing I'd like to add about our optimizer that's coming soon is uh, it will still remain agnostic, meaning that if you work with NAS and determine that uh, our hybrid might not be the right fit because it's not always the right fit and you still need optimization or some type of rapid shutdown for your solution, uh, 
our, our system will, or rather our optimizer will work. So it's not one of these situations where we're going to require you to use our hybrid inverter or other equipment to be compatible, to have it, have that compatibility. Uh, we uh, maintain our agnostic stance and believe that you as the consumer uh, should have that choice.